This is the public face of Winston Winky Irvine. Here he is at the parade standoff at Twiddell Avenue, sharing the platform with the Orange Order. Orange man Billy Mawinney threatens a campaign of civil disobedience unless the 12th March is allowed to complete its journey home. And here he is speaking as a PUP spokesman about a dissident pipe bomb attack earlier this year. There are people who are still intent to use violence, to use bomb and bullets to try and pursue a political agenda. He also has a variety of positions on community organisations, many of which entail him working closely with the PSNI. He appears to be a pillar of the loyalist community. But Kathy McIlvenny says she believes Mr Irvine also has another role. Is the commander of the UVF within the Woodvale area? Kathy says she first came to know of Mr Irvine's role in the UVF because she dealt with him as the UVF man who organised a punishment shooting of her nephew Craig in 2002. He came to my home as a UVF representative and I knew that they were taking Craig out to shoot him. But Winky assured me it would just be grace, which it was in the end. Spotlight has spoken to a dozen people who have also told us they know Mr Irvine as a senior UVF man, including UVF whistleblower Jim, who says Irvine is his B Company commander. Winky Irvine is commander of B Company, one of the most violent UVF brigades. It turns my stomach to see him as a PUP spokesman because I know what the history the guy has. Jim recalls a B Company meeting shortly after the UVF murder of Bobby Moffat in 2010. He says rumours that they were being stood down were quickly quashed by Winston Irvine. Now, there was 300 people there and there was certainly a feeling before the meeting that optimistically we were going to get our P45s. We were going to be let go. That was quickly put to bed. What happened at that meeting? Well, the next thing that happened, the B Company commander got up on the stage and says, you think you're here for your fucking pipe and slippers? You aren't. And what did you take that to me? No one is going anywhere. The allegation Irvine is the commander of the UVF's B Company has frequently been reported in Northern Ireland. Nevertheless, last year, he was appointed to North Belfast Policing Partnership an appointment Cathy McIlvenny objects to. The Mayor Police and Partnership should not have a paramilitary commander sitting on it. The ordinary person in the street cannot complain because you're going to the par paramilitaries to complain. Cathy has complained to the policing board about that appointment. She wanted to know how the man she says is a UVF leader was allowed on the partnership as all appointments are vetted by the police. The answer to that was that they sign an oath not to take part in criminality or paramilitary activity and they do not promote by deed or action any paramilitary group. The police say vetting the membership of policing partnerships is not a matter for them. The police and community safety partnerships um, are one of the bodies that the policing board has a direct responsibility for. The police service do not have a responsibility for either uh, the formation or running of those. Uh, those are meetings that obviously that we attend, but they belong very much to the policing board. The policing board said independent members of the partnerships are appointed in line with the Department of Justice Code of Practice. As a policing partnership member, Mr Irvine is pledged not to support, by word or deed, any terrorist organisation. Yet Cathy McIlvenny and our whistleblower are adamant that he is in fact the commander of a UVF company, a company that is still active and still recruiting members. Since his appointment last year, he's attended UVF parades and this Ulster Covenant commemoration in the company of individuals widely reported to be senior UVF figures. Here he is at those celebrations. As we've heard, he says these are historical commemorations. But he is leading a group of Shankle men, and beside him are two men who are regularly reported to be senior UVF commanders, Joe McCaw and Harry Stockman, said to be the organisation's overall number two. 
Spotlight wrote to Irvine, Stockman and McCaw, along with a close associate, this man John Bunter Graham, who again has been reported on many occasions to be the leader of the UVF. In solicitors' letters to the BBC, all four men denied ever being UVF members. In his letter, Mr Irvine said the allegation he is B Company commander is preposterous and he said he had never been a member of an illegal organisation. But that claim is at odds with the evidence of this photograph of him in the early 90s, walking in a UVF colour party at the front of the annual Brian Robinson parade. In his left hand, he is carrying a wreath on behalf of the UVF. Indeed, allegations of the role of all these men in the UVF have been well documented in reports over several years. Harry Stockman is seen here at the announcement of UVF decommissioning in 2009, where it has been reported he read the organisation's disarmament statement. And this is John Bunter Graham, in a picture from the 1970s with his fellow members of UVF A Company on the Shankle. Among those pictured with him, the infamous Shankle butcher Lenny Murphy. And here he is with UVF members, interned in Long Cash. Spotlight has a sworn affidavit from a former detective who says he has long known Graham, Stockman and McCaw as UVF men. And we have two affidavits from individuals prepared to name Irvine as a UVF commander. For Caffey, Winston Irvine is the prime example of how someone she believes to be a paramilitary is allowed officially sanctioned power and influence in the community while, she says, continuing to be a UVF leader. It's like the Mafia. There's no will there to bring these guys down. The will there is to pay them and keep them quiet and make it look on the surface like everybody's living in peace. The ordinary decent people still respect the police, they respect law and order. What they don't respect is the cover-up. They don't respect the UVF being treated on a par with politicians because they know that the paramilitaries are still the criminal elements which are running crime empires in their area. Over the last 12 months, the UVF leaders who were supposed to have gone away have not just been a policing and community issue, but a political problem too. Increasingly, they have brought their politics to the street, with a declaration of intent on the first night of the flags protests, which began at City Hall. They did hijack the flags protest. I was there on the night of Monday, December 3rd, the night that the attack was made on the back gates of the City Hall. The impact of the protests and